So thank you. Um, I come from Natural Resources Institute Finland, or shortly just LUKE. And this work has been done in collaboration between the uh, University of Helsinki, LUKE, and University of Eastern Finland. And all these institutes are Finnish organizations. By the way, yes, I was looking for that. Thank you. So. <clears throat> I have a little bit different perspective than the previous um, presentations which we have seen today. So actually I'm looking at this from the point of view of national forest inventories and I ask whether remote sensing data could make the sampling design more efficient. Just a short review what the National Forest Inventory is like in Finland and in many other countries as well. So the design is a systematic design. The sample plots are organized in clusters. Uh, the clust uh, sample plot to sample plot distance is around two to 400 meters. And then from a cluster to another, the distance is uh, from three to eight kilometers, depending on the sampling region. So the design can vary within the country uh, in respect to density. <coughs> and the entire country is covered with, with the systematic design in Finland, excluding the most northern part where there is hardly not productive forest at all. And the rotation, so every year is measured sample plots on field, but in rotation of five years, the whole coverage of all sample plots is measured. And based on the measurements, we can estimate the status of the forest resources, but also changes compared to the previous inventories. And the data is used for different kind of international and national reporting. But about two and a half years ago, we started to test a new sampling method in the context of NFI. It name, its name is Local Pivotal Method, LPM. And the idea in this sampling method is that we utilize auxiliary data. And when the sample is chosen with the LPM, the idea is that in the sample, the distribution of auxiliary data uh, would be as close as possible to the distribution at the population level. On the right hand side is a small example. So on the top is the population with three auxiliary data. So for each pixel on that picture, we know its location, so X and Y coordinates. And to on top of that, we have a prior information of the growing stock in each pixel. And with the histogram, you can see the distribution of this uh, growing stock variable over the map. And then below it is in the middle a sample chosen with the LPM. And in the bottom is a traditional systematic sample. And on the right hand side, you can see from the histograms that the LPM sample is better, has captured better the, the taste of the distribution of the volume auxiliary data than the systematic design. But there is, of course, one consequence. If you use auxiliary data, then you will get an irregular sample. It's not any more systematic in respect to the geographic coordinates. And this method has, is already in the use in Sweden and in consideration stage in Finland. And in this study, we have fed this sampling method with two kinds of different remote sensing data. The first data set uh, originates from the Maldisos National Forest Inventory 
data which produces uh, uh, forest resources maps of different kind of variables related to the land use and soil quality and growing stock. <coughs> These maps cover entire Finland and are updated at two year intervals. And the estimation at pixel level is based on the satellite images and on the field measurements. And it's a kind of k nearest neighbor estimation. The other data set is ALS data, which has been collected um, during the last 11 years by the National Land Survey of Finland. And now it, the coverage is the entire country. It, uh, it has a low pulse density, and for this research, uh, a cell size of uh, 30 by 30 meters were extracted from the from the data set and for those cells uh, high than density metrics the classical set of metrics was estimated so actually we are now entering to the <laughs> to the study questions and um, and what we wanted to see particularly with this study was that uh, could the ALS data be used or does it enhance uh, the design? Uh, what will be the possible enhancement compared to these multi-source national forest inventory maps? And what happens if we put these two data sources together? Our study region is shown there on the map and how the study was carried out was that we simulated the sampling. So we kept the, sam kept the sample size constant but we were changing in this LPM the set of auxiliary data. And in that way for each sample we estimated the inventory results there is forest area and then a set of uh, volume result variables. On the y-axis is the relative efficiency of the designs and uh, there the comparison was made to LPM where we utilized only the spatial location. So if the value is about one as we can see as it is in all, uh, all cases, it means that uh, utilizing auxiliary data is beneficial. The design is more efficient than, than the design without them. So some, some points, some results from this uh, graph if I, uh, I'm pointing out now. So first of all, hmm, where is my pointer? There. First of all, for the mean volumes in three species groups, the enhancement was much, much less than in, in the other variables that we had chosen to investigate. On the other hand, for the ALS data, only in the mean volume of all three species estimation, the, it was more efficient than for the multi-source data. But when these two were put together, in all other variables, it was equally or more efficient than, than none of these uh, data sets or the data set uh, alone, except for the forest area. It was the most efficient in the multi-source forest inventory data case. We also studied the efficiencies in respect to single auxiliary data, data variables, but I won't go here into details. I just said that also this analysis showed that it was beneficial to have both data, data types in the, in the design. So some future thoughts. First of all, let's look how this uh, ALS data was acquired. There is a simulation starting now on the right hand side. 
as you see, small patches annually. That is a problem in our case, where we kind of need to have the distribution over the forest area. In an 11 year campaign, there happens changes in the forest. And since the data is not updated, it's a problem. There happens changes because of forest management and damages. So, um, compared to that uh, multi-source forest inventory maps, which were estimated at two-year intervals, you see that this is still behind that. And maybe, actually, in the future, the situation will improve. But anyway, according to the results, if there is an aim to improve the estimation at the tree species level, then some additional information sources or new metrics should be estimated and put into the simulation or the sample selection. But uh, this unique data set that we have now for the first time, there will be a continuity for this ALS collection in Finland. There is a decision about that. And we are open from the NFI point of view to utilize this kind of data also for other our estimation or, or design in the NFI in the future. And thank you. There is manuscript on way. Thank you.